The Department of Homeland Security's National Cybersecurity Awareness Month is already underway. In keeping with the theme, the International Spy Museum is launching a brand new exhibit on cyber warfare, which explores how a cyber attack could impact the United States. Weapons of Mass Disruption opens up to the public this weekend, but we got a special sneak peek from the museum's executive director. Hello. I'm Peter Ernest, the Executive Director of the International Spy Museum here in Washington, D.C. We have just opened a new gallery, and it is devoted to cyber war. So as we go through this exhibit, we will show you both some, of, some parts of what consists of the cyber world, and we'll show you what could be the devastating consequences of a massive cyber attack on this country. This is an urgent action notification from the emergency alert system. This is not a test. This is a critical warning. Major portions of North America's electrical grids may have been disabled by unknown cyber spies. It's not clear. This cyber threat is one of the most serious economic and national security challenges we face as a nation. It's also clear that we're not as prepared as we should be. As an international spy museum, we are concerned with anything that has to do with intelligence, stealing information, carrying it out action uh, against governments, whether it's our own or someone else. We are looking at the spectrum of intelligence. And the last uh, room before this one uh, we show a film which tries to take a look into the 21st century. What will we be dealing with? And one of the things we are dealing with, and everyone knows, is what is, what is called asymmetric warfare, uh, specifically that carried out by terrorists. And all that's meant by that is, even though we have major military forces and tanks and aircraft carriers and so forth, the people we're confronting in many cases are using improvised explosive devices in roads they're flying airplanes into buildings. Uh, they're, they're carrying out car bomb and suicide attacks. Those sort of things are characteristic of what is called asymmetrical warfare. In, in carrying out our mission here, in other words, in showing something of what the threat of a cyber war might be, which is the function of intelligence after all, we want to get some sense of where the battlefield is. And it, of course, is the internet. And everyone understands the internet. And the internet takes place, of course, and also in, in what is the electromagnetic spectrum. And here, behind me, we're trying to show the different fields of the spectrum. Obviously, radio broadcasting might be down at the lower end, and then it moves up through the various parts of the, the spectrum, satellite communications, uh, aviation links, and so forth. All of that is part of the spectrum. So if anyone were to disrupt in any way the, the internet or attacked aspects of it, it could affect any one of these. Now what we've done here in the gallery is shown some of the major parts of the spectrum, not all of them, but some of the major parts through colored lights, which then go up onto the ceiling and travel all over. What we're trying to capture here is the electromagnetic, the electromagnetic spectrum is around us all the time. It surrounds us like a giant web, like a giant spider web, with all these things taking place all the time. We are being attacked every day for purposes of people gathering intelligence, looking for ways to disrupt uh, the internet, disrupt computers, penetrate our systems. One possible outcome, of course, is an attack on the entire electrical grid or portions of it, that is the East Coast or the West Coast or that portion in, te in, in Texas. And if the electrical grid were to go down, certainly for a prolonged period of time, the consequences could be devastating. It would affect these different aspects that we're looking at, communications, transportation, water distillation plants, all of those. Think also of what holds us together in terms of, of, of our bartering, in other words, our financial transactions, because all of that depends so much on the grid. In other words, credit cards, the ability of the bank to, to process your account, enable you to draw money. All those things are dependent on electrical power, so that banks would need to close, credit cards would no longer be value, valuable, 
uh, would no longer have value. Uh, ATMs would be begun shutting down. All those things that give you access to your means of going into society and bartering for goods and services and food would no longer work. So we would be we would be reduced to simple bartering. And of course, keep in mind one of the things that's affected are the the aspects of law and order, like the police and so forth. You you can imagine a society in which that be, begins to break down as well. As you leave the gallery and you've seen what are possible consequences of a, of, of a massive cyber attack on this country and the mass disruption that would take place. Think about those times in history when we have been attacked, when, whether it was Pearl Harbor or 9-11, and the consequences even of those attacks. This would be far more devastating, a cyber attack on our society, in our homeland, than anything we have ever seen. So as you leave, think about this as an awareness, uh, an awareness for you of, of what this sort of thing could be, a cyber attack. I think it raises questions about what our government, what private industry is doing to help protect us against such attacks. There are ways, there are ways to try and protect us. I think as even the president has said, we are not there yet. There are simply uh, too many ways that we are open for people to penetrate our systems. ABC News Now. Good to know.